Welcome to the channel, folks. We're going to be talking about Guardian Druid Mage Tower uh, against Varus and Cruel today. Just going to give you a rundown of how I do the fight, talents I pick, and why I think it's the best way to do it. Number one, here's the talents we run. Uh, the things that I would consider most mandatory are the Typhoon with the uh, cooldown reduction, disorienting roar, sorry, incapacitating roar, of course. Um, and of course, kick. Everything else, largely actually optional. And the big deal at the bottom here for me is I want to stress the Elune's favorite talent. This actually gives you uh, healing threat, which is great for picking up the Nether Horrors, uh, which is a very real benefit to bear druid in this fight is not having to go get your damn nether horrors off felon so pulverize is an incredibly powerful damage reduction cd uh, if you play convoke and pulverize in this fight you can essentially have pulverize up for every annihilate cast we'll go into more about annihilates during that part of the fight and uh Ursox fury is just an insane amount of self-absorbs and absorbs are great they're more max health etc uh rage of the sleeper for damage and damage reduction this plays into our annihilate schedule as well i've gone over this a few times there's three or four optional super optional points you can get here you can even get maim for the uh super gamer stun cruel in the air as he's jumping on you and then get meleeed to death in phase one there's a few specific things we want to do as the nether horrors come out we want to collect them this will be most easily done via leech or a druid hot um, you can also go pick them up like a like a goon once they're on you, you need them all to start casting their ability, and you disorienting roar. You incapacitate and roar it. Uh, this disorients them. They will not recast the ability, and you kill them before they do anything uh, ugly to you. Do note that they have a melee attack that stacks up side talons on you. This is very dangerous. If you let it get to high stacks, don't. Um, as you're killing them, just kite them out a little bit. Kind of one of those things is... You know, once Mangle and Thrasher are on CD, just fucking run out and Moonfire them, right? Like, you're going to get Cleaves. It's going to be great. Uh, secondly, for Drain Life, we want to use Typhoon on it as much as possible, even to the point where Ferris might get a tick off on it, because it's, it's not too much, like 1%. Uh, using Typhoon on Ferris's Drain Life allows you to keep your kick up for uh, kicking an actual dangerous spell or using it as a charge to get back in. Uh, using that as a kick on a nether horror that you didn't or somehow missed with disorienting roar or something like that. I keep calling it that incapacitating roar, which disorients mob. Additionally, if you typhoon the nether horrors, they don't stop casting. They just come screaming back at you with their fucking cast in full go. So additionally, almost lastly for phase one, uh, if you find yourself at eight or nine stacks of the health debuff from bears, uh, we're saving bark skin specifically for that in phase one because the matted fur talent will provide for you an absorb shield that covers at least a full damage cast and a half of bears uh it's just under just over two i think it's just under and for the eyeballs one move fire is enough to just have them die out to the dot but if you need them to die now now you're gonna have to hit them twice try not to do that if you can avoid it a couple things before you push Varus uh, into death. I like to have him as far away from Cruel as possible. This keeps the Infernals away from you, at least while you're starting your kind of Cruel uh, setup. The first 10-15 seconds of Cruel is very hectic. Uh, additionally, you want to push kind of right after you've summoned, summoned your Nether Horrors and dealt with them. If they come up during the, during the Cruel spawn, you're going to be dealing with an Annihilate, a Twisted Reflections, uh, all four of them casting their, their AoE ability, jumping over purple marks, and making sure you uh, you tank your Annihilate appropriately and get out of stuns, so, or out of puddles. So it's a lot. Keep Varus away from Cruel and push right after you kill some Horrors. Uh, if your one minutes aren't up for your first Annihilate, that's fine. I just tend to wait that out anyway. The difference between one Infernal and two is not really much. When Cruel drops, uh, I like to bring him over here kind of by this pillar or this crack uh, and just kind of start my deal. First thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting that first Annihilate like pretty quickly, five seconds or so. Um, again, you don't need anything for that, but we're Rage of the Sleeper convoking uh, so that we can have it up for the third and potentially the fifth Annihilates. 
after this point is when you would like use lust and uh you know drums and potion if, if you have stuff like that or you know, hit berserk and carn and just start whittling whittling away at the boss as you're backing him up uh while spam jumping over the purple uh the purple lines that are meant to like sweep you off the sides uh jumping over and against them is kind of like a really good way to deal with them actually um i wouldn't like run against them or try to run around them you just jump and go you know after first annihilate you're going to get a stomp and you're going to want to back out of that uh and you're going to have twisted reflections cast like kind of right after that once that twisted reflection is is cast you kind of have a breather on a lot of things he's just cast you know uh annihilate stomp and twisted all kind of right there you're probably going to have your ads coming up now and again they're going to come to you via the leash if you only have one moon fire out this is funny if you only have one moon fire out uh, that might not be enough leech to pull the ads to you. So if there's a infernal, not infernal, uh, an ad close to you when they spawn, just tag that guy immediately with a moon fire. Uh, and two moon fires is usually enough to, to get that leech and a loon's favorite threat working in your favor. When the nether horrors have gaggled up on you, again, you, you have to be patient. You have to wait for them all to start casting and hit them with a the disorient right as uh, they do that. This will also disorient cruel. A lot of times he's jumped on me right coming out after that so i like to get some separation from there anyway just as a habit also to kind of space the pools out a little bit because you're not going to be filling up the whole room and you can having room in between the actual puddles is is beneficial in case you find yourself back over there now the good thing about phase two is we can start using those orbs or using them to much greater uh efficacy on the ad so ad spawn once they're on you is when you should be using orbs or you know after you've disrupted their cast via incapacitating roar you should probably make sure that nether horror ads aren't spawning at that exact moment and if they are just wait for them to get to you if you disorient them at their doors again they're going to uh, start their channel and come screaming straight towards you and probably over velen and kill velen right like that's no good other than that you're just going to be doing a kind of a backup around here keep your iron first up for your annihilates Make sure you're adhering to your annihilate schedule with your defenses. Again, we're doing, you know, Rage of the Sleeper Convoke and Pulverize. Then, uh, then again, we have Bark Skin and Rage of the Sleeper Convoke for the third one. Fourth one, we hit our first survival instincts. And for the fifth one, you throw everything uh, and the kitchen sink at it. You're probably not going to get five. And again, this is this is timing with uh, very standard gear. No no extra fancy crap. No consumables and no lust or anything like that. Uh, you should be well ahead of the five annihilate mark and gen generously within the three and four range and additionally in general as the fight's going to, as it allows you to getting big distance from the infernals uh, or infernal is going to make things quite a bit easier on you it's really hard to see the infernal uh, ground fissure knockback like range uh, under cruel adds you know boss asses and puddles right like it's all just one big cluster and infernals are so slow you can easily get to the other side of the area and not have to worry about them for quite some time and just one tip i would have uh for orb usage a good timing for that is kind of right as cruel as casting his annihilate uh, if you wait till the end of the annihilate cast orb and then he has to recast the whole damn thing over again uh throw in there the occasional disorienting roar from you know uh, you locking down the nether horrors and you can really extend the time he takes between uh subsequent annihilates or even just the, the fight in general it's really nice to push that if you're if you're low on damage which you probably won't be but that's essentially it and i don't know uh just to reiterate this is all done in very basic gear you don't need a time walking set you don't even need a good embellishment or anything like that although all that stuff helps tier bonuses current tier bonuses work pretty sure embellishments work there's a whole bunch of time walking shit that works i wouldn't even mess with that uh just go in there with the gear you have and put the strategies and you'll you'll get it down good luck guys thanks for watching we'll catch you next time